how do we recover from low energy availability or relative energy deficiency in sport? So that's LEA or REDS. So this is being afraid to let go of like what our body looks like and everything that comes with it. So I personally, I've had to recover from this. So I know that when I was ready, I had to make sure that I was mentally prepared for the weight increase. For some, it's a weight increase. For others, they find they lose weight. Mm -hmm. uh, so it is a process. Um, it's very complex because we have a lot of socio-cultural and psychological things involved in activity and nutrition. So uh, there are some people, and this is part of the reason why I got into the stuff that I do, where if you were to go to a physician, they say, stop everything. Mm -hmm. And of course that doesn't go over well because no. that's not taking into account anything that you are as a person who likes to be active and, and competitive. So we first look at the Delta. So what I mean by that is if I'm looking at someone who has low energy availability and I know they need to increase their calorie intake by a thousand calories a day, it's not like I'm going to say, here's an extra massive, huge meal you need to eat. We look at time over about three to four weeks where we can increase calorie primarily in and around exercise and fuel. Yeah. And that exercise, we are dropping the metabolic load. So we tend to be more strength oriented with a couple of explosive movements because it's less metabolically taxing. Mm -hmm. So we aren't generating as much energy. So our body is able to understand this distress, recover from it. And if you're fueling appropriately, it starts to come into a positive energy balance. So we get you out of that low energy availability into a, a really good energy balance without really having a dramatic uh, change in body composition. Mm -hmm. 